In this video, we're going to learn about the standard error, also known as the standard error of the means, typically abbreviated as SE or SEM. So we're going to learn what, first of all, what it is, uh, how to interpret the standard error, why we might want to use it, and how do we calculate the standard error. And so let's start with an example. And so let's say that we have this awesome new drug that we're going to use to treat cancer to reduce the size of people's tumors. And let's say because we're creative, this drug is named, I don't know, K295, because that's just how we name drugs. And so let's say we give this drugs to a set of patients. And on the red here, I've drawn the patients that received the drug. And on the right, the patients which have not received the drug. And so the question is, how sure are we that these two populations are different? So are these different? And the standard error lets us answer this question. In particular, it lets us answer the question, are the means of these two populations different? Because that's usually what we care about when we're designing a new treatment. There's going to be some variation, but we care about the average dis difference between a treatment group and people that didn't receive the drug, for example. So let's be concrete. Let's say that the we have 10 people enrolled in our received group, and we've got 10 people enrolled in our placebo group. And the mean of the received group is equal to 2.4. So let's say that this is the tumor size, for example, uh, perhaps in cubic centimeters. And the standard deviation of the group that received the drug, let's say, is 0.6. The mean for the group that didn't receive the drug, let's say, was 4.3. So they've got, on average, a larger tumor. And the standard deviation, let's say, was 0.4. Now, this is, this is our mean and standard deviation, but we don't have a whole lot of data points. So in particular, suppose that I gave one more person the drug, and that person happened to be out here. Then our mean, which right now is right here, would shift a little bit it would shift a little bit to the right. So it would get a little closer to the group that didn't receive the drug. And so this, we're, we're not so certain about where exactly the true mean is. You know, we've said it's 2.4 for this group of 10 people, but it might be 2.6, it might be 2.2. How exactly do we know where that mean is? And this is where the standard error comes in. So the standard error we can calculate as the sample mean divided by the square root of the number of samples that we took. So in the case of the patients that received the treatment, our standard error is just equal to 0.6 divided by the square root of 10, which is about 0.2. And so this tells us what the error is in our estimation of the mean. So if I draw that down here, we think that the mean is right here. So we think that it's 2.4, but it might be, you know, it might be 2.6, it might be 2.2, and the chance that is that it is within plus minus two times the standard error is about 95%. So the chance that our actual mean falls between two times the standard error, so here this would be 2.0 to 2.8, is 95%. So the probability is 95% that it's within these. But this is cancer treatment, so we probably want to be even more precise. If we, if we go to plus minus three times the standard error, this captures 99% or actually closer to 99.7%. So we, we add a little bit, our little tails here. So this is 3.0, and this is 1.8.
So we're very confident, in fact, we're 99.7% confident that our true mean is somewhere between 1.8 and 3.0. And you might be kind of surprised because when we look at the distribution above, it looks like it's it's clustered pretty tightly around the around the mean. But in fact, this is our this is our actual range that we got from the standard error. And part of the reason it's so large is because our n is pretty small. So right now we have an n of 10. So if we increased the number of patients that we had, so say we had an n equal to 100 patients and we got the same standard deviation, then our standard error would shrink. So if this, this graph was for n equals 10, we can draw one for n equals 100. Now, instead of, and let's say we, we find the same mean, so we find a mean of 2.4. Now our standard error is equal to 0 0.02 instead of 0.2. So our distribution is much, much tighter. It looks something like this. So there's a 99.7% chance that our mean is between, now it's a 2. Point, what, 2.3, let's see, 0 0.02 times 3, 2.34 and 2.36. So we've got a much, much tighter estimate of our mean because we've got a much larger number of patients. And so if we were to draw in our placebo group or the group that didn't receive the drug, then they might look something like this if we have a large number of patients. So the tumor size over here, let's say it was, it did happen to be 4.0. The standard error of this, let's say is also 0.02. And so we're almost completely certain that these are two different distributions. And so we could take this, go to the FDA and say, look, we're almost completely certain that our drug works. Could you please give us approval? Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.